The Sony a7S II and the Panasonic GH5 lacks is one important feature for fast and reliable video autofocus. Now before we begin, this video is not meant to be a deal breaker for both of these cameras. Both the a7S II and the GH5 are fantastic cameras with buttload of other cool features that make them some of the best mirrorless cameras out there for filmmaking and video content creating. This video is meant to be an educational piece for some of the more casual users and soon to be pro newbies out there on what to look out for in their next DSLR or mirrorless camera if they want fast and reliable autofocus in video mode. So what exactly do both of these cameras lack? They lack a thing called a phase detection autofocus system. So what do they use to autofocus then? They use a thing called a contrast detection autofocus system. So let's go ahead and jump into the difference between phase detection and contrast detection. Now I can't explain to you the engineering science behind these focusing technology with my useless arts and humanities degree. So if you wanna learn more about them, I have some resources linked down below for you to read up on, but for now, here's what you need to know. Contrast detection is a lot more slower compared to phase detection, but arguably some people say it's a lot more accurate. Basically, the system analyzes whatever's on the screen and tries to pick out something with the highest point of contrast. Now, the best way to explain how this works is let's say we have these four lenses right here. The longest lens will represent the highest point of contrast. So the camera will sort through these four lenses and picks out the one that is the longest by going through and comparing each. So we'll half press the shutter and the competition starts. Since this one longer than this one, mm, this one is longer. So this one gets out of play. So now we have a candidate for the longest lens. We're gonna go through the next comparison. Now is this lens longer than this one? Camera's thinking mm, this one is longer. So now we have a new candidate for the title of the longest lens. Now you and I both know that this is obviously the longest lens, but the camera doesn't know that yet. We still have one more comparison to make because of this lens right here. So the camera makes the one final comparison. Is this lens longer than this lens? It's thinking it's, mm, no, this lens is longer. So now finally the camera has deemed this one to be the longest, giving you that visual green confirmation on the screen and the auto boat. That's why when sometimes you try to photograph an object, the camera will go past the focus first before coming back to the object and lock focus on it. It's okay for static objects or static subjects, like if you're shooting a portrait, but when your subject starts moving, then uh, <laughs> we have a problem. So let's go back to this whole lens example right here. This camera is trying to find the longest lens. It has a candidate. It's gonna move on to make the next comparison. It's found the competitor, but in that time, the candidate moved. The camera has no idea where it went, so it has to run another comparison. It's gonna look for these lenses right here. It's found this, this thing again. It's gonna do that one more comparison, and it runs away again. I don't know, it's moving around in circle, dancing around, confuses the crap out of the camera. Long story short, contrast detection does not work well when there's a moving subject. Hence why you may have heard the whole debacle about the GH5 and its horrible autofocusing system because they only use contrast detection. When the subject starts to move around, the camera may take a while to react and then readjust its focus on the subject or more often than not, wouldn't even react at all. It just stays blurry and it doesn't know what it's doing. It's like vegetable state or something. <laughs> Same goes for the A7S II. Phase detection, on the other hand, splits the images into two. So when you half press the shutter, it aligns the images together to achieve focus. See, unlike contrast detection, phase detection would not have to go past the focus a little bit just to double check on things to see if it's right on the focus. Once the images are aligned, the focus is locked on and it will stay locked on. This is what makes tracking and continuous focusing possible because once the camera locks on the focus on the subject, it won't let go. That's why cameras like the Sony a7R2 and what I'm using right now, the Sony a6500, have really good video autofocus. I'm shooting this video right now and I'm moving around, I'm doing some crazy things and this a6500 should be keeping up with me fairly well. Man, if it was a camera with contrast detection, it would be like I don't know, it's just been a long day. Sony cameras 
with the exception of the a7s2 of course have fast hybrid autofocus that pretty much combines the best of both worlds the face detection autofocus and the contrast detection autofocus giving you the speed and accuracy for fast and reliable autofocus that's why cameras like the sony a9 and the a6500 have blazing fast autofocus not just in photos but also in video Sony also have this thing called 4D focus and what that does is that it kind of looks at everything on the screen two dimensionally first and find a subject that it needs to focus on. Then it needs to look at how far or how close the subject is. Depth. 3D. And to explain, to basically explain what 4D is, is uh, it's pretty much predictive focusing. Let's just say we have a subject running towards you, Terminator style. The camera will know how to adjust the focus and at what rate to keep that moving subject in focus. Also, this is why it is important to use native lenses for phase detection autofocus to work proficiently. The lens need to understand the same language as the camera. If you adapt lenses with an adapter, then the adapter would try to translate the camera's language to this third party lens. And it's like, you know, taking a whole bunch of text from the internet, a foreign language test, dump it into Google Translate and let Google Translate tell you what it means. But then the, the, the meaning gets lost in translation and you miss the focus and you know, you, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, you know, just, just don't adapt lenses. Just trust me on it, just, just don't. Wow, what about Canon Dual Pixel AF? What is, what is that technology all about? It's the same thing, it's phase detection. It is, they just do it, they're just doing it fancy. They wanna call it Dual Pixel AF, you know? It's just, it's the same thing. By the way, I have a guide on video autofocusing. So if you have a Sony camera that has the fast hybrid AF, then definitely check it out. Really learn how to use the focus area to your advantage to nail focus on your subject whenever you're shooting a video. And if you live in LA or you will be in LA next month on November 10th and 11th, I will be doing a class with Sony and demoing the Zhiyun Crane, how to use the Sony cameras with this one-handed gimbal. So I'll definitely talk more about autofocusing with the crane, keeping your moving subject in focus and just tracking them forward, backward, left, right, whatever. And then on the next day, November 11th, I'll be teaching a class. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say teach, but I'll be doing a joint lecture on how to be a YouTube content creator with Jason Lanier. So if you guys are a fan of him, you're a fan of me, you're a fan of the two Jasons, come out on either days, we'll be there. There's a bunch of other classes that's hosted by Sony at Sammy's Camera on both of those days. So I'll have more information on these classes in the description box below. Be sure to check it out and make sure you register. Classes are free, but in order for us to save you a free spot, you better register. So. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.